Good day everyone. Alright, so um, in this video I want to talk about uh, past year questions again from the 2019-2020. So this is going to be for uh, the module or the course of SP015 which is the Malaysian Matriculation uh, Certificate for Physics. Alright, so this is the physics module. So the, the questions I'm going to talk about today covers from um, energy and power all the way to circular motion these will consist of uh, three questions okay all right at least I have broken up to three questions one on work one on power and then one on circular motion all right so without further ado let's get into it uh, let's look at the first question all right, so we have an inclined plane, a block on an inclined plane. Uh, the figure shows a 15 kilogram block being pulled by a 100 Newton force at an initial speed of 2 meters per second up an inclined plane. All right, so it's moving up, up, it's moving up the inclined plane. The block travels a distance of 6.2 meters parallel to the inclined plane. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.14. By using the work energy theorem, calculate the uh, change in kinetic energy of the block. So the work energy theorem is going to refer to the uh, statement that the total work or the change in kinetic energy is going to be the total work done on the body. All right. So that's the key idea that we're going to have here but um, before we can calculate the total work we need to find out what's what forces is acting on to on the block all right so um, a, a useful picture to have here is just a basic force diagram so let's just have an inclined plane all right so i'm just going to draw out an inclined plane and then a block all right and then i'm going to set my x and y axis right so i'm going to choose going up the inclined plane to be positive x and of course uh, 90 degrees to that we will have and away from the inclined plane we'll have um, positive y all right okay all right so um along the inclined plane we have the external force i'm just going to draw it out like that so I'll have the external force and then of course I will have weight going down. Um, I'm going to use Fg at this moment to differentiate between uh, weight, you know, the gravitational force and work done, W. I don't want to use W at this moment, okay? Um, of course, if it's moving upwards, then uh, frictional force is going to act in the opposite direction and of course, normal to the inclined plane we will have normal force okay so it's very easy to um, work out or apply newton's second law um, in the y direction we can immediately write down that n equals to sorry yeah n equals to um, fg so this is 25 and this is going to be 25 as well. Fg cos 25, right? Degrees. Um, the reason why I want to write down n at this moment is because we're dealing with uh, frictional force. So I see frictional force. I know that frictional force is going to be mu times n. So I'll just write down n, the equation for n, right off the bat, okay? Okay, so um, now we can look at what sort of forces it will be will be considering, all right? So if I want to sum up all the work done, I'll have a few components. Number one, the work done by external force, right? So it's going to be this one. And then I have the second one, which is the work done by friction. And then I'll have the last one, which is work done by weight so by gravitational force okay so if i all add them all up what i will get is going to be the change in kinetic energy 
all right so let's consider one at a time okay so um let's think about the work done by the external force i'm just going to write down f dot s where this f that we're thinking about right now is going to be ext right the external force all right so the work done by the external force is going to be equals to the external force all right f ext multiply by s which is the displacement okay travels a distance of 6.2 meters so it's going to be 6.2 and then i have my cosine the angle between f and s so that means um, we will have 100 because it's 100 newton okay multiply by 6.2 and then cosine the angle between the force and the displacement, which is going to be zero. So what I'm left with is 620 joules. I'm just going to double line it right now so that we know that is what we want to use later on. Okay. All right. So the second work, uh, the second work done by a force that we want to consider is the frictional force. Okay. So I'm going to write down WF equals to, all right, so let's think about it. We have frictional force dot S. So both of these are vectors, okay? So um, frictional force, I will have just, again, frictional force, multiply with the displacement, and then cosine the angle between frictional force and displacement, okay? So... Um, let's just write down again WF. I need to substitute this W, uh, this F with mu and FG cos 25. Okay, so that means I will have F equals to mu times FG times cos cosine 25 degrees. Okay, and then of course I will have displacement and cosine theta fs again uh, i just want to put a note here that fg is in fact equals to mg and m is simply 15 kilograms times 9.81 all right so let us now calculate the work done by the frictional force i'll have mu which is 0 0.14 i'll have mg which is 15 times 9.81 then I have cos 25 25 degrees and then I'll have uh, S which is the displacement 6.2 meters then I have the angle between F and the direction the displacement that is going to be a, full, a half rotation so that's cos 180 right so work done by force is going to be, if you key that into the calculator, what you'll find is going to be minus or negative 115.76 joules. All right, so let me just uh, double line that again. And then the last of the work done that we want to consider is going to be by weight okay so now i'm going to use again fg dot s all right um again i will have fg equals to 15 times times 9.81 so fg times s all right and then times the angle between them so um let me just use red at this point you want the angle between the displacement and fg so it's going to be this angle okay so that is going to be 90 so 90 plus the 25 i'll just write down there 90 plus 25 all right so wg is equals to f fg 15 times 9.81 uh, and then times 6.2 and then cosine 115 degrees. What I'm left with is WG equals to 
minus or negative 385.57 joules. All right. So I have all three values. Let me just show you again. This is the first value, second value, and my third value. Now I can calculate the network done onto the block. Okay. All right. So I know my change in kinetic energy, which is equals to the summation of all the work done is simply going to be 620 minus 115.76 minus 385.57 which means my delta k is equals to 118.67 joules so that is my final answer all right that answers the question what is the change in kinetic energy of the block? All right, so let's move on to the next question. All right, we have a motorcycle accelerating uniformly. So accelerates uniformly, meaning that we can use A equals to V minus U over T. All right, um, from rest, to 25 meters per second in five seconds so based on the first sentence alone i can immediately calculate what my acceleration is going to be so um, that's going to be 25 minus 0 over 5 which means i have an acceleration of 5 meters per second per second all right so calculate the instantaneous power hmm. um, of the motorcycle at time t equals to 3s all right so i need to know right let us just write down the work uh, the equation for power which is f dot v v since f is in the direction of v we won't worry much about the dot product but um the v here we need to know what is the velocity when t equals to 3 seconds? Okay. So that means we have to use one of our kinematics equation, which is u plus a t. Alright. So v when t equals to 3 seconds is going to be 0 plus 5 times 3. So that's going to be 15. So v equals to 15 meters per second my force is fairly direct to calculate i can just use equal f equals to ma right so that leaves me with p equals to ma times 15 okay so my m is going to be 120 motors uh sorry 120 kilograms multiplied by my a which is 5 then multiplied by 15 that leaves me with 9,000 watts or 9 kilowatts. Okay, so that is going to be my final answer that the motorcycle has an instantaneous power of 9 kilowatts when T is equals to 3 seconds. All right. So um, let's move on to the last question, last part of the question, which is going to be circular motion, right? Um, a 16 gram ball is swung vertically using a 0 0.5 meter string. Okay, so I know the radius is going to be 0 0.5. I know the mass of the ball. Okay, calculate the minimum tension in the string if the speed of the ball is 1.5 meters per second so minimum tension let's just do that minimum tension means it is at the top at the top of the circular motion so if i were to just draw a circular motion right 
we're talking about when the ball is situated at the top of the uh, circular motion. If we were to consider the ball there, we will, we will have the following equation when we apply Newton's second law. We will have T, which is going downwards, and then we will have Mg going downwards as well. So that means T plus Mg equals to Mv squared over R. So this is because it's at the top, right? If you draw the free body diagram, I'll just do it right here. If I just draw the free body diagram, I'll have T in the downward direction, and then I'll have weight in the uh, downward direction as well. So that is f that makes sense, right? If I just um, calculate, if I just rearrange, sorry, if I just rearrange this equation so that I'll have T on the left-hand side, what I'm left with is going to be V square over R, M V square over R minus G. So I've taken out the M because it's the same thing. It's the same value. Okay. So um, now I have T and I can substitute the values. 16 grams is 0 0.016, right? So 0 0.016 kilograms. And then I have my V, which is 1.5 square. Do not forget the square. Okay, um, and then R, I have 0 0.5, and then minus 9.81. And of course, my T is going to be minus or negative 0 0.08496 Newton. Okay. Right, so um, that is going to be our final answer for T. And then let's go into question B. Okay, so this is question A and this is question B. All right, so the speed of the ball when the string breaks. So when the string breaks, what happens is, right, so when the string breaks, what happens is your tension will be zero. There's no more string, so there's no more tension, right? So if I have T plus mg equals to mv square over r, and this goes to zero, I can cancel out the M, right? What I'm left with is, and I bring the R to the other side, I'll have V square equals to GR. I can determine the speed of the ball by just uh, square rooting both sides, right? I'll just square root both sides. I'll have V equals to the square root of G times R. Okay, I can substitute the values now. Okay, so 9.81 and my R is going to be 0 0.5. That means my V is going to be, let me check, 2.215 meters per second. So that is going to be my final answer that the speed of the ball when the string breaks is going to be 2.215 meters per second okay that is all we have covered um, we've talked about work done right we've talked about work done we've considered work done by multiple forces multiple constant forces and then add them up together and then we use the work energy theorem to say that that is also the change in kinetic energy and then we've talked about uh, instantaneous power, right? And then, of course, last but not least, we have talked about uh, circular motion. In this particular case, it is a case of vertical circular motion. And that for the first part, we are talking about minimum tension. And minimum tension is about when the ball is at the top of the circular motion. Maximum is at the bottom, minimum is at the top, okay? Okay, so that is all from me in this video. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll follow up with more 2019-2020 uh, videos. All right, thank you very much.